Good morning, Beaver Dam. It is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel. And here we are starting off a new week. Today is uh, May the 22nd, and it's Monday, and it's a beautiful day. We've had a, a long stretch of some really nice days here. Well, good morning, Martha. Glad to see that you're joining us. If you have to be joining us live or throughout the day, I invite you to, to uh to drop us a line there in the comment box. And if this uh, time together really speaks to you, I invite you also to hit that like and share key there on Facebook so that uh, others can hear, uh, hear our time together. So uh, we're delving into some text today from the Gospel of Matthew. And uh, today's scripture comes from Matthew 22, and we'll be taking a look at verses 34 through 40. Well, good morning, Karen. Glad to see you're joining us. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the, to the scripture, shall we? So today's scripture comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. And I'm reading from the Common English Bible this morning. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus has let, had left the Sadducees speechless, they met together. One of them, a legal expert, tested him. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? He replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets depend on these two commands and there we go some good scripture this morning well good morning christy uh chris and dave and good morning mom glad to see you guys are joining us so uh as we've done in the past um we'll we'll spend a little bit of time in prayer focusing on one particular verse and this morning's verse that we're focusing in on is verse 37 so uh, let's get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. Let us still our hearts, take a couple of deep breaths, and focus on the things of God. Focus on the presence of God that is with us. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 37 from the King James Version. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. From the New Revised Standard Version, he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. from the Common English Bible. He replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your mind.
and from the New Living Translation. Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And lastly, from the message translation, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence. Amen. Amen. So we're continuing to use our Renew, uh, Renew My Heart daily devotion. And uh, the one for today is entitled, All Together a Christian, the Lord, uh, the Love of God. And it does uh, focus in on the, the verse that we just spent some time in prayer with. So let's hear what, uh, what Wesley has to say. We come second to what is implied in being altogether a in being altogether a Christian. First, the love of God, so says his word. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Such a love as this occupies the whole heart, takes up all the affections fills the entire capacity of the soul and employs the utmost extent to all its faculties. One who thus loves is continually rejoicing in God. He's, his delight is in the Lord, his Lord, and, and his all, to whom he gives thanks in all things. All his desires towards God and to the one remembrance of his name. His heart is always crying out, Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none on earth that I desire besides thee. Indeed, what can be the des his des what can he desire but God? Not the world or nor things of the world. For he is crucified to the world, and the world is crucified to him. He crucified to the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eye, and the pride of life. He is dead to pride of every kind. For love is not puffed up. One who is dwelling in love dwells in God, and God in him. And he has less than nothing in his own eyes, for the love of God is the mark of an altogether Christian. Hmm. This is inter interesting because, um, and I, I really do appreciate um, Wesley's writings here. Uh, and if you remember from from last week, we spent a little bit a little bit of time talking about the almost Christian. The almost Christian who uh, who doesn't see evil and and does and does good and sees good in folks, but what was missing in the almost Christian was this love of God, and I think that really is what distinguishes 
people from being just a good person to being a true Christian, to being somebody who follows God fully with their whole being. And I think that's what uh, Jesus was getting at here in the Gospel of Matthew, that for us to really be true followers, to really live into what we know is what we what we would know is the law, we have to love God with all of our heart, soul, and mind. I really like the way that the message translation put that: love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence. I think that uh, that really speaks to me. You know, it was uh, I read this morning that it was it was typical for um, for people back in Jesus's day to argue which law was the greatest. And Jesus said, hey, look, you're missing the point here. It's not one. It's not all of the laws. It's this particular one that kind of raises above all else, because all of the law, all of the prophets all hang on this love of God. And that's where we ought to start. So that's what I encourage you do, to do today is to take some time and reflect upon your love for God and, and uh, ponder for a little while where it comes from and how your relationship is with God today. Well, just something to, to think about on this beautiful Monday morning. Well, uh, for now, let's, uh, let's get ready to take on the day. Let's, let's close with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all of the gifts that you've given us. And God, we, we thank you for your presence in our lives. And God, we ask that you help us to stay focused on our love for you, our complete love for you, and what that means for each and every one of us. God, we ask that you be with those who, who, are, uh, who are facing challenges today who are facing either medical appointments or, or just not feeling well and not feeling up to their, their own standard, or if they're traveling, just, Lord, we just ask that you be with them all and that you let them know that you're near. Let us know that you're near so that we can feel your guidance. And God, help us enjoy this beautiful day that you've given us. Encourage us to get outside and and notice where you are in all of your creation. God, we raise this prayer to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, friends, remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace, y'all. Bye for now.